25 before the hour. Uh, Lonnie in Eugene, Oregon, writes regarding the Fox inauguration response. Commentators on Fox repeatedly framed the president's speech as intractable, an assault, an indication he will refuse to compromise. I hope the president triples his Secret Service security team. Thanks, Mike, for your sane voice, Lonnie and Eugene. Uh, yeah, I hear you, Lonnie. And and uh, I, I realized I was on Fox after the speech, and they went to their their crazy anchor people, and that's when I immediately switched over to MSNBC. I don't I don't believe in exposing myself to that kind of sick, toxic madness. But um, regarding Fox, I, I wish I had a button where if I push the button, everybody at the Rupert Murdoch terror operation would go into the cornfield. All of them into the cornfield. Um, back to uh, Obama's speech. This next one is... Uh, Pretty much, and I'll be curious to see if because of what he says here, the next sentence you're going to hear, if he will veto the Keystone XL pipeline. We will respond to the threat of climate change. Okay. Knowing that the failure to do so would betray our children and future generations. Okay. Some may still deny the overwhelming judgment of science, but none can avoid the devastating impact of raging fires and crippling drought and more powerful storms. The path towards sustainable energy sources will be long and sometimes difficult. But America cannot resist this transition. We must lead it. We cannot cede to other nations the technology that will power new jobs and new industries. We must claim its promise. That's how we will maintain our economic vitality and our national treasure our forests and waterways, our croplands and snow-capped peaks. That is how we will preserve our planet. Well, that and vetoing the XL Keystone Pipeline, Mr. President, I mean, right? Uh, we all will take you at your word here. We will not betray our children and future generations. And the some who still deny the overwhelming judgment of science are all Republicans. Interestingly, uh, or interesting, while he was saying this, Iraq's prime minister met with the head of ExxonMobil today. <laughs> yeah, Iraq's prime minister, uh, the one that we put in there, met with the head of ExxonMobil today to discuss ExxonMobil's plans for the country. Raising the possibility that the Iraqi government could be mending its dispute with America's largest oil company. Now, there's the wild card in that, of course, are the Kurds. They have their own armed forces. They've signed dozens of deals with foreign oil companies since the 2003 U.S.-led invasion. Not a lot of the fighting, if any of it, occurred in the Kurdistan section of north, east, and northern Iraq. <laughs> so, Mr. President, um, I hope you're right. I hope you're going to realize what you have to deal with, with these filthy, cowardly Republicans, and I hope you're going to stick it in up to the hilt and break it off. I really do. Uh, war. 
Mr. Obama has promised to end wars, hasn't he? Uh, no mention of drone strikes, but this is what he said about war. We, the people, still believe that enduring security and lasting peace do not require perpetual war. Our brave men and women in uniform, tempered by the flames of battle, are unmatched in skill and courage. Our citizens, seared by the memory of those we have lost, know too well the price that is paid for liberty. And oil. The knowledge of their sacrifice will keep us forever vigilant against those who would do us harm. But we are also heirs to those who won the peace and not just the war. Well, now, um, Mr. President, I'm sure you'll address this in your State of the Union speech, but there is a whole new front that has now opened up in this un unending war between Christians and Muslims that has been going on for 800 years. And the new front, of course, is the northern tier and not so northern tier of uh, the African continent. So, while uh, the Taliban will very slowly reassert itself, as these right-wing crazy bastards always do after the military invader pulls out of Afghanistan, and as Pakistan sinks into, um, I don't know, a dictatorial state that's so close— and at which point India may just decide to launch a preemptive nuclear attack, and then, ooh boy. But as far as this unending war on terror, so-called, Mr. President, this perpetual war that you so aptly, as you so aptly called it, uh, as you and your national security team understand, there's a whole new front now, Africa. And to say that... Um, that that our military has been fighting for liberty. I, I realize that's that's rhetorical um, grease that has to go into any kind of political speech. But I don't think our military has been fighting for liberty. Are we to believe that Vietnam was a fight for liberty? Are we to believe that Nicaragua was a fight for liberty? Are are we to believe that? I, I mean, pick one. Liberty for whom? Come on, Mr. President. Um, like I say, I realize you have to spread a little monkey grease for these freaks on the right wing, or else they'll start rattling their cages and, demand and demanding more nuts and bigger bananas. But, dear God, we don't fight for liberty. We fight for unfettered corporate privilege in the countries that we invade. Really? I, I mean, I, I realize you're uh, degreed and much smarter than I and, and that you have the uh, your finger on the codes and all this other stuff, but fighting for liberty? Is, is that what Afghanistan has been about for a decade? Really? Who'd have thunk it? Is 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 that what our backing of Israel is about? Is, is liberty for whom? Is, is that what the invasion and wholesale slaughter in Iraq was about? Liberty for whom? So I'd be careful if I were you, Mr. Obama, if if you're going to hold to. Uh, um, uh, truth when you're when you're giving these very inspiring speeches and and I'm hey listen I'm, I'm I told I've said this many times I'm the first to admit that Barack Obama's speeches are if anything inspiring but I would I would be careful because your your supporters people who put you in office twice now might begin to see through the uh, the curtain of these words 
I don't know when we have fought for liberty. Uh, I, I guess in my lifetime, but I, I don't know when. I mean, a lot of people will say, well, you know, World War II was a fight for uh, liberty. Was it? Is that what that was all about? Was it uh, liberty for what? For, for us here in the United States? Or was it liberty for corporations even back in the 40s? Uh, if I remember right, uh, an exceedingly large number of the CEOs back in the 30s and 40s were advocating for an alliance with Hitler. I get very confused, Mr. President, but I think it's only because um, I'm not as uh, smart about these things as you are. We'll be back with a couple more of uh, comments from the president in a moment. 